Dear friends, welcome to Bond with Arca Chemistry YouTube channel. In coming videos, I will explain theories of bonding in metals. In theories of bonding in metals, we have valency bond theory, free electron theory or electron C model and band theory. In this video, we have valency bond theory. Valency bond theory was proposed by Linus Pauling to explain the bonding in covalent molecules. The same valency bond theory was extended to the metals to explain bonding in metals by Linus Pauling. In simple covalent molecules, the number of bonds on central atom are equal to valency of central atom. But in case of metals, the number of bonds on central metal atom exceeds the valency of central atom. The excess number of bonds on central atom, central metal atom, was explained by the Linus Pauling by extending the concept of delocalization and resonance in covalent molecules to the metals. The true structure of metal is described in terms of covalent bonds that resonate among the alternate interatomic positions in metals. When there is a resonance of a delocalization of covalent bonds among the alternate interatomic positions in metals, then there is a formation of different forms or different structures. These contributing structures are called as resonating structures or canonical forms. In metals, we have two different types of resonance forms. One is a synchronous resonance form and second one is unsynchronous resonance form or pivotal resonance forms. The true structure of metal is a hybrid of a hybrid of all the possible resonating structures. Let us take a simple metal lithium. We know that Lithium crystallizes in body centered cubic. In body centered cubic, uh, at the center of the body, we have one lithium atom. At the eight corners of the cube, we have eight lithium atoms. The central lithium atom is surrounded by eight uh, nearby lithium atoms. According to valency bond theory, there are eight covalent bonds between central lithium atom and uh, eight lithium atoms on corners. For this, uh, there is a need of 16 electrons. But in this unit cell, you can find 9 lithium atoms. 9 lithium atoms can contribute uh, 9 electrons. So here the number of bonds, the number of bonds are 8. The electrons which are required for the formation of 8 bonds are 16 electrons. But really we have 9 electrons, 9 valency electrons. So here, the bonds are electron deficient bonds. Here, the number of bonds exceeds the number of uh, valency electrons which are required. This was explained by taking uh, resonance forms. In case of lithium, you can find a synchronous uh, resonance forms and also unsynchronous resonance forms. Suppose if you take lithium and lithium, there is a one covalent bond according to valency bond theory. And another lithium if you take and this one is binded with uh, another lithium and there is a covalent bond between these two lithium. In this structure, I have taken four lithiums. In between two lithiums, there is a covalent bond. When there is a synchronous movement of uh, covalent bonds, here this is the moment of covalent bond and here this is the moment of covalent bond. There is a synchronous uh, moment of covalent bond. Then you will get uh, covalent molecules. You will get uh, non-ionized resonance forms. But in case of uh, unsynchronous moment of covalent bond, here there is a moment of only one covalent bond. Then this lithium gets negative charge and this one gets positive charge. In the unsynchronous movement of covalent bonds, you can find unsynchronous forms which are ionic in nature. You will get ionic resonance forms. The complete structure of metal 
lithium metal. It's a hybrid of uh, both synchronous forms and unsynchronous forms. By using valency bond theory, you can explain some properties of metals. You have some merits and some limitations of valency bond theory. What are the merits? You can explain conductivity of metals. The conductivity of metals is due to having ions and also delocalization of electrons. And also you can explain the property higher density. It is due to close packing. And also the theory explained the malleability and the ductility of metals. When you apply stress, there is a rolling of uh, layers of metals. When there is a rolling of layers of metals, there is no breaking of bonds. That's why these are malleable and ductile. These properties are explained by the valency bond theory. But uh, the valency bond theory has certain limitations. It failed to explain metallic luster, why metals are shiny or why metals are uh, bright. And also inability to explain metallic character in the liquid state or in solution. Suppose when you convert a solid metal into liquid metal, when you convert solid into liquid, there is a retention of uh, metallic properties. Why there is a retention of metallic properties? Uh, is not explained by the valency bond theory. Thank you. Thank you very much.